Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video, we're going to go through our five favorite features in Adobe InDesign. We've also created a free template download so you can try these features out alongside this video. Okay, I'll pass you over to Rory now who'll take you through these features. Thanks Ross. So jumping straight into our template file, we have a few elements and pages set up that we are going to use to demonstrate our five favourite features in the software. So first on the list are the margins and guides we can use in our documents. Now you could argue that these are separate features, however I'm including them all as one as they're all there to help us lay out our content. So at the moment I'm in my preview mode, however if I hit W on my keyboard you can see I can reveal my margins margins and columns, as well as things like my bleed area and slug area. So all of these are very important for creating consistent compositions and for setting up documents for print. So these can all be set up when setting up your document in the first place or afterwards. If I just go up to file and document setup, you can see we've got things like the page sizes. And if I drop down the bleed and slug options, you can see I've got a bleed of three mil and a slug of 10 mil, and these are being applied to the document. So I'm just going to click OK. You also see these purple lines inside our page which are the columns and margins. Again I can go up to layout, go to margins and columns and I can adjust these parameters as well. So what I'm going to do is actually bump our margins up to 12 mil. We've got two columns, I'm going to bump that up to three and we're going to change the gutter value to 12 mil. So this is very easy to do and we can apply this to every page if we want or just specific pages. So what I'm going to do now is just slightly reposition this text and we are going to get on to making this look a bit nicer in just a moment. For the time being, we're just going to focus on this layout here. Now we also have the ability to add guides very easily. I can either use my rulers at the top or left hand side to drag out horizontal or vertical guides, or what I can do is go back up to layout and we have a create guides option. Making sure preview is checked, I can add rows here and that's going to add some horizontal guides across the page and I can space these out exactly with these parameters as well. So this is another really useful feature and it's just going to help create consistent and precise compositions. I'm just going to click cancel in this case though and we'll move on to our next favorite feature which is the use of images and image frames in Adobe InDesign. So what I'm going to do in this case is drag in an image. We have a few set up within our links folder here. I'm just going to pull through this one, so image four. I can simply click and drag this in and I have a few options. I can either click and drag this to the size of my choosing or if I simply click once that's just going to place the image in at the full size. Now images work slightly differently in InDesign to a lot of other software and it can take a little bit of getting used to. However I actually find this really intuitive. What I'm going to do is first of all just scale this down with this percentage drop down up in the control panel. So I'm going to set this to 25% of its original size and what will happen is if I try to transform this by using using the bounding box here, the image itself isn't actually going to do anything. All we're doing is adjusting this frame. However, this comes in very handy when we're creating things like compositions because we want to think more about the composition of where our images are going to be and how they're going to be placed. So being able to adjust the actual frame size makes this much easier. And we have a bunch of options up at the top in our control panel here. I can click this button to fill the frame proportionately with the image. So you can see the whole frame is being filled if I click this circle in the middle, I can actually grab the image itself and now I can resize and transform the image itself without adjusting the frame. So like I say, this can take a little bit of getting used to, but becomes very intuitive to use once you know how it works. So moving on, our next favorite feature is paragraph styles. Now, if anyone's used these before, you will know that they are a real time saver when it comes to large multi-page documents. And what these allow us to do is apply consistent styling to our text throughout a document very easily. So I have my paragraph styles panel set up on the right hand side. You can simply go to window styles and paragraph styles to select it. And we've already set up some basic styles within here. So what I'm going to do is just double click into my text box here, which isn't looking very good. You can see we've got things like headings and subheadings here. So I'm just going to place my cursor within this heading text. And if I click my heading option here, you can see 
the text formatting is changing based on what we've set up with this paragraph style. I can do the same for subheading and my body copy. I'm actually going to click and drag over all of this body copy and select our body copy styling. We have some footer text here, so I'm going to click footer. So I'm going to double click into this text and you can see it's left aligned and it's not formatted. What I'm going to do is select the body copy option. We don't have a caption option set yet, but this is the way I go about setting up my paragraph style. So I've already applied a font here. We've got our size set up, although I'm going to bump that down to 10 point in this case. We're going to go for the bold variant of Helvetica and I'm going to invert this to be a white color. And lastly, I'm just going to right align this. So you'll notice in my paragraph styles panel, we have a small plus next to my body copy. So that's denoting that we've applied the body copy style, but we have made some changes. What I can do instead though, is just click the plus button down at the bottom to create a new style and I'll name this caption instead. And now we can use this paragraph style for any other captions within our document. So this is really useful and a big time saver if you're creating multi-page documents with lots of text that all need to be formatted consistently. Moving on to our fourth feature and that is master pages. So I'm going to open my pages panel and you'll notice up here we have a master and none and this is basically a way of applying consistent elements throughout lots of pages again saving you a lot of time. So I'll double click into our a master. If I press w again we're going to get our margins and columns. Now you can see that our margins and columns have reverted to what we had set up in the first place. So what I'm going to do is go to layer out margins and columns and I'm going to make the same changes so 12 mil I'm going to go three columns and then a 12 mil gutter as well click OK and you'll notice in our pages panel each of our pages has a small a at the top of the thumbnail so this denotes that this a master style is being applied to all of them so these margin and column changes we've just made will be applied to the other pages we have here as well but I can also do things like add text or graphic elements to this and they will also get applied to these pages. So I'm just going to click and drag out a text box and what I'll do is just add some simple copyright text for example. Now I'm going to drag something off to the right hand side instead and I'm going to add a page number. So we've just got some simple footer elements but if I go back to one of my other pages now you will see these are being applied to this page and this is going to apply to any page with the A master styling being applied. Now you may not want this to apply to every page and this is where master pages are really useful as well. So on this first page we created we've got a lot of elements down at the bottom and I don't want to crowd it down there. You could also have a cover page where you don't want to feature things like a page number. So what I can do is click and drag the page that has none next to it over the page that we want to apply that style to like this first page and that's going to remove all of the master page styling. Or on this third page for example you can see the text isn't showing up over this image because it's too dark. So what I'm going to do is select my A master, right click on it and duplicate master spread A master. So now we have another one. I'll select both of my text elements here, go into my text color and change this to white. And I can drag this new B master over my third page, double click on that. And you can see this text is now white and it's going to show up better on this dark background. So they are super helpful in situations like these. But moving on, our fifth and final feature is pre-flight. Now we use InDesign a lot for the creation of printed materials and making sure they're set up correctly for print is crucial. So what pre-flight allows us to do is proof our documents to make sure they're set up correctly before exporting them and this is going to minimize the chance of there being any issues when it goes to print. I have mine set up on the right hand side again but you can go to window down to output and we have pre-flight down here. So as you can see we have have one error with this basic working profile related to some text. We have some overset text so what I need to do is just drop this down. I'll double click on this text and you can see we are accidentally cutting off some of the text here so that would have been an issue in itself but what I've done is set up my own print profile as well. So this has things like checking for color spaces and image resolution so you can see we now have seven errors being flagged. I think all of the images in this document are set up in RGB. You can see if I click on one down at the bottom, the problem is being flagged as the RGB color space. So normally we want to use CMYK when we go to print. So again, I could double click on this image
image, I can see which one it is and I can go and replace this with a CMYK version. Similarly, below this we have an image that isn't of high enough resolution. So again, we want this to be 300 PPI for print and this is only set up at the moment of 157. So I would, again, I would have to go and change this. And this feature is great at proofing any of these mistakes and ensuring that what we're exporting is set up correctly. But overall, there are so many great features in Adobe InDesign. These are just our five favorite. Be sure to try them out and see how you get on with them. So there you have it. These are our favorite features in InDesign. There are so many more great aspects of the software though. Be sure to let us know what your favorite tools and functions are in the comments down below. And if you want to learn more about graphic design, we've created a free one hour training where you'll discover the top five secrets of successful designers, which saves you the hassle of having to figure it all out for yourself. We'll be showing you, one, how to immerse yourself in the sector you're designing for, two, creative thinking and how to spark creativity, three, what good composition is and how you can achieve it in your designs, four, how to pick the right colors for your designs, and five, how to pick the right typefaces for your projects. So if you're serious about leveling up your design skills, then make sure to sign up for the next free webinar. Space is limited and these events always fill up fast because they're significantly better than the information others charge you for and ours is free. The link is in the description. You're not gonna to want to miss it. I'll see you there.